To get started, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about our company, Eagle Point Software. We have been in business since 1983, so for over 40 years. Um, and in 2006, we introduced the Pinnacle Series platform. Pinnacle Series is our solution, our e-learning solution, but it is goes far beyond just the training content within it. We are one of the founding members of the Autodesk Developer Network. Um, today, we have well over 600,000 users in Pinnacle Series, and that number is growing on a daily basis. But what I really want to bring your attention to today is we are a company of architects, engineers, construction, and manufacturing professionals. Our largest team here at Eagle Point Software is our customer success team, and right behind that is our development team. I highlight that because we create and produce all of our content here at Eagle Point Software, and we also own our platform. So we're constantly introducing new features and enhancements to make it an even better user experience for our customers. And then, of course, Nicole and her team do a great job of making sure our customers are successful with our solution. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to the real star of the show today, Nicole Rohusky. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much, Danny. All right. Before we dive into the user interface here, what I want to do is I want to set the stage for the solution that you all are going to see here today. So in 2006, when we made the transition from focusing on installed applications to focusing on the e-learning environment, what we were hearing from organizations is that they were struggling with the three core challenges you see here on your screen today. That includes continuous learning, knowledge capture and sharing, and increasing productivity. So to take a few moments to unpack those a little bit further and dive into that first challenge of continuous learning. This is one that most firms struggle with and it stems well beyond onboarding new employees with new features, functions, and versions hitting the market annually. It can be hard to keep employees up to date and in production. We are often hearing from BIM managers and CAD teams that they needed to upskill their staff, but it can be hard to gauge an individual user skills gaps. Employees may be overestimating or underestimating their skills. So leveraging our Knowledge Smart feature, we're able to gauge a user's product understanding today and via Pinnacle Series, provide them with a personalized learning path that is going to allow them to upskill in those identified skills gaps. In addition, users are going to have access to Autodesk and other AEC content for that just-in-time, on-demand training that they're needing while they're functioning in their day to day roles. But lastly, all of the content available within Pinnacle Series is fully customizable. So all of your standards and resources can be easily uploaded and shared across the platform. From here, we're going to transition to that second challenge of knowledge capture and sharing. Within organizations, you're likely to have pockets of knowledge, whether that's office location specialties, studio specifics, or just a, uh, a subject matter expert that is going to be retiring soon. So ultimately, what we want to enable you to do is, is capture that knowledge and upload it to Pinnacle Series to share those best practices, company standards, workflows, enabling all these resources to be easily shared. But the beauty of this is Pinnacle is actually going to track who's managing that content as well as who is accessing that content. So you can ensure that your resources are staying up to date as they change over time. And lastly, that third challenge of increasing productivity. Within the AEC space, it is critical that products are completed on time with high quality and under budget. However, when users become stuck, that likely go-to method is users are going to turn around, tap a colleague on the shoulder, and ask their question. Ultimately, what that leads to is you have two people trying to solve one problem, which can lead to a fall in production. Instead, we want to empower these users to jump into Pinnacle Series, run a search, find their answer, and they get back onto their project work. So all in all, the, the solution that you guys are gonna see here today is meant to address these three core challenges. So let's dive into that user interface here. 
First and foremost, I do want to highlight that this is going to be a browser-based solution. So your users are going to have access to these resources wherever they have internet access, whether it is a mobile device or a tablet. They also do have the opportunity to view this content offline, which we'll touch on in a little bit. Now, it is important to note that everything on the user interface is completely widgetized, ranging from the My Courses, the Asset Libraries, Live Events. Ultimately, what this does is it allows you to customize specific user interfaces for office locations, project teams, really giving you the opportunity to really hone in on that user's day-to-day -day role. And I like to think of this as an opportunity to remove any noise that is not going to be relevant to your users. And is and from a user perspective, if users have a different preferred learning language, they do have the opportunity to set that within the platform. We are servicing over 90 different languages. So I'm going to go ahead and direct your attention to the left-hand side of the screen here. Essentially, you are going to be able to link out to additional resources for your users, whether that's an intranet, additional training materials, whether that's going to be uh, insurance information. Really, you do have the flexibility here to hone in on what is going to be beneficial for your users. Now, directing your attention to the asset libraries, think of these as containers of information that are going to house your custom resources as well as the out-of-the-box resources that are provided by the solution itself. So up top here, we have examples of custom asset libraries ranging from corporate best practices to company standards. You could focus in on onboarding new team members, having a, a specialized learning path for every employee in your organization, or having it be role specific. You could even hone in on professional development that your users are going to be doing throughout the year, focusing on services that your office offering or the specific service or softwares that you leverage within your organization. Now, down below here, we're going to have our out-of-the-box content. So this is going to be turnkey, ready to go on day one. It's going to range from Autodesk products, Bluebeam, business and management skills, global BIM standards, so ISO 19650 training, health and safety. We're even actually going to teach you how to use the platform itself via the Pinnacle Series Library. We're going to have SketchUp and much, much more. But for today's discussion, I'm going to go ahead and expand out our Autodesk library. And you're going to note that it's going to be our our most robust offering ranging from AutoCAD, Civil 3D. But for today's discussion, I'm going to go ahead and jump into our Reddit library. And the first thing that you're going to know with this is that we're actually servicing multiple version years starting in 2024 stemming all the way back to 2012. Now, we recognize organizations likely are not operating in 2012. You do have the flexibility to turn off any irrelevant version years and hone in on what you're currently servicing. However, I wanted to give you an idea of the breadth of information that exists within the solution. Additionally, it is important to note that within each asset library, there's going to be four different asset types. That is going to include learning paths, which will walk a user through a skill from start to finish. So think beginner, intermediate, advanced. We're going to have workflows, which will walk a user through a process from start to finish. Again, all of this content is fully customizable to your organization specifics or specs. And you're also going to have access to documents and videos. So these are going to be quick tips or tricks for your users to be able to find the resources that they need and they get back onto their project work. Now, it is important to note, jumping back out to the home page here, from an end user perspective, users are going to be enrolled in courses in one of three ways. It is going to be the result of a knowledge smart assessment that is assigned by themselves or a manager. It's going to be that a manager has enrolled them in a course or a learning path, or it's going to be something that they self-opted to learn more about. So leveraging our Knowledge Smart feature, we're actually able to assess employees as well as interviewee candidates on their current product understanding. So you'll note here within my test library, I have express assessments. These are pared down assessments that are meant to be given to interviewee candidates before they even come into your organization as an employee. You're able to preview what's being asked of that user, excuse me, and essentially 
basically it's going to be a mixture of knowledge based and task based questions. So do you know and can you do? So can you walk that walk if you're a really good interviewer? It's a really good gut check for an organization to know uh, the candidates that they're hiring. But in addition to that, you can assess your current employees if you want to start with some benchmarking, knowing where any uh, downfalls for your teams are and where you should spend time upskilling your teams. You do have that flexibility. Now, as a result of a knowledge smart assessment, you are going to be able to provide your users with a result summary. And so this is going to be an understanding of what was asked of those users, how those users answered that specific question. So you can expand out any of these questions, see what was being asked, how they answered it. And they're also going to be available to have access to coaching notes. So you're able to remedy any error in that user's thought process when they're functioning within their project work. Now, all of these assessments are going to be customizable, similar to how the learning paths are going to be customizable, and giving you that flexibility to insert how you operate here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and jump back here. And we're going to jump back into Pinnacle Series. And as a result of that Knowledge Smart assessment, users are going to be provided with a personalized learning path. And so it's going to be denoted by a Knowledge Smart trophy. Let's say I took a Revit for Architecture Fundamentals assessment. Essentially, it's going to pare down my learning experience. So you're going to note here that I have successfully passed out of 16 full courses. I am no longer going to spend time training on the things that I don't know. I'm only spending time training, excuse me, I'm just spending time training on the things I don't know instead of spending time training on the things that I already know. So in this case, uh, from an end user perspective, I can see the things that I only need to upskill on. I can go ahead and toggle on show all topics to see things that I successfully passed out of. But let's say as an organization, this is 90% of how you operate. Leveraging our management utility, you're able to essentially drag and drop any content that you have already created. So let's say, for instance, you, your teams already have Word documents, PDFs, PowerPoint, Excel that have already been created. You would simply navigate to that resource tab here, and you're going to be able to pull those resources in and make them searchable for your users. But essentially, once you have those resources within the platform, you can then begin to plug and play that content into the learning path here. So let's say, for instance, I want to copy down a learning path that we've already provided. I'm going to go ahead and I copy that down. I'm going to access that Revit Architecture Fundamentals learning path, and I'm going to go to the courses that I want to modify. So let's say, for instance, there's a specific way your organization works within walls. You can go ahead and navigate to that walls course, and you can add and remove that content. So this is going to be a huge time saver from a BIM manager perspective on being able to uh, add resources that are relevant and push them out to your users to allow them to upskill and prevent and, and prevent any rework that may be coming out of that. In addition, within our management utility, users, and specifically administrators, are going to be able to assign out any of those assessments that are being provided to those users. So in this case, if I were to go to assign assessments, anything that has a Knowledge Smart trophy next to it is something that is going to have a personalized learning path mapped to it. I can go ahead and select Add here. And essentially, you can assign this out to your, your interviewee candidates. All you need is their name and their email, or you can assign it out to your current users. You do have the ability to establish expiration dates for the learning and the assessment, but you can take this one step further. So let's say, for instance, as an organization, you determine that a user that scores above an 80 on an assessment is considered proficient in your eyes. Essentially, what that means is that user is not going to be assigned any learning as a result of that assessment. The same thing goes if that user scores below a 30. If the user scores below a 30 and it is deemed by that organization they need to upskill, they're going to upskill in that entire learning path as a requirement to ensure that your teams are, are able to function efficiently within their project work. Now, jumping back out to the homepage here, what I want to dive deeper into is our live events calendar. So at Eagle Point, we believe in the opportunity to provide your users with a blended learning approach. And so we are able to provide that via the live events calendar. Some users may not have a preference when it comes to on-demand training. So this is the, uh, the alternative here that you as an organization can leverage, as well as Eagle Point is going to provide weekly sessions 
surrounding a variety of different titles here. So we have new content coming in pertaining to ACC. This is going to cover Revit, Civil 3D. Users have the opportunity to jump out to this calendar. They can select an upcoming session, see who's presenting, what's being covered, and they can register for that session. But as an organization, you're also able to host your own internal session. So let's say, for instance, you're bringing a vendor into your organization, whether it's a virtual vendor or on site vendor, and you want to encourage your users to register for this session, what you're able to do is you're actually able to couple the learning that exists within the platform by assigning a prerequisite. So let's say, for instance, you want your users to have a foundational understanding of what that vendor is talking about. You can assign that prerequisite. Essentially, the users will not be able to register for that session and get the information until they have successfully completed that prerequisite. And then to take it even one step further, you're able to pre-survey and post-survey your users. So in the instance, it's a lunch and learn uh, during your pre-survey, you can ask them if they want ham, turkey, or roast beef to get your lunch metrics. And then you could follow up with a post-survey if they found that vendor helpful or provide any follow-up answers to questions that were asked that weren't able to be answered at that time. So it's giving you the flexibility to provide a variety of different learning modalities to your users. But the beauty of this is all of the sessions are going to be recorded. And so they're going to be accessible to your users at a later date. They can come out here and access a previously held recording. They can watch that session, or it's going to be accessible via the asset libraries that are pertaining to that specific product, giving users access to the resources that they need. Now, let's say, for instance, as an organization, you want to establish a career pathway for your users that are coming into your organization and that are currently working uh, very hard to achieve your products. Essentially, what you're able to do is leverage our role-based learning to establish pathways for your users. So let's say, for instance, you bring in a project manager, you're going to associate the learning that is going to be beneficial for that project manager to function within your organization. They're going to come into Pinnacle Series and consume this learning when they have the time to do so. It's going to go ahead and jump down to, the, to show the completion, to remove that from their viewpoint. But then let's say this person is very ambitious and they want to set the stage for that next transition within your organization, ultimately what you're able to do is you're able to create linear or a couple of different options for your users to select from. So in this case, that next job role is going to be a senior project manager, or I can select from the job drop down screen here to choose what's going to be beneficial for me. And so as I jump to that next role, I can start to consume that learning before I even make that transition. All of the learning metrics are going to be tracked from the administrative side. So when that transition does come into play, whether it's an interviewee or a seamless shift, you're able to validate that that user is ready to hit the ground running within your organization. Now, from the end user perspective, you are going to have access to transcripts of all of the learning that you've done within the platform. So let's say, for instance, you wanted to come out here to your enrollment history. You wanted to access content that you have successfully completed. You can download a certificate of completion to showcase that you have successfully completed that courseware. Organizations do have the ability to customize their own certificates of completion. So if you're going to be providing anything that's specific to your own internal resources, it's going to be branded to your organization. Users also do have the ability to export their entire enrollment history. So if they need to provide that to an accrediting body for professional development hours, continuing education units, you have that ability. In addition, you also can track any external learning that you've done outside your organization. So if you did a PMP certification or if you attended a conference and you received a certification, ultimately what you're able to do is you're able to submit that to your platform administrators with your documentation. They can approve or deny the, the, the session that you attended, whether or not it meets your own internal requirements. But ultimately what this is enabling is to have one central location for all of the learning that is done by the users internally as well as externally. Now, as an administrator of the platform, 
they are going to have the tracking metrics associated to how users are interacting in this case. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to take a look at the last year of learning that's been consumed. I can come out here and hit refresh here and that jumped. I apologize. And so essentially what you're able to do is you're able to see current enrollments that are being consumed, courses that are being completed, who your top learners are, as well as the learning time that's being consumed by your users. You can also see how users are progressing through any of the learning paths that they have been assigned, the courses that are coming due, as well as if they've registered for any of those live event sessions and if they have successfully completed it. Now, there are going to be granular metrics available within any of these reports. So you can actually see if users are fully watching videos, how they're doing on quizzes, and even if they're jumping ahead in their learning, and it can be a validation that they are retaining that information or a gut check for your user be like, hey, what's going on? Why are, why are you jumping ahead and you're learning? What's, what, what, what can we do to make this better? So you do have that flexibility in terms of being able to validate how your users are learning. Now, we spend a lot of time talking about the learner journey within the platform, and we recognize that when users are functioning in their day-to-day -day roles, they're likely not going to be spending their time learning. They're going to be spending their time on their project work. So ultimately, what I want to do now is I want to shift gears here a little bit and talk how users can actually leverage Pinnacle Series while they're functioning in production. So let's say, for instance, I'm currently working on a Revit project. I'm working with stairs. I'm going to come out here and run a quick search as it pertains to stairs. We've all leveraged a Google search before, but ultimately what this is allowing for is you can actually filter down by publisher, asset type, or even the current version that you're functioning in. So let's say I'm functioning in Revit 23. I'm going to pare this down to my current version here. And essentially, what this is providing is subject matter expert vetted resources. So you're not getting down a YouTube or a Google wormhole while you're in your project work. And ultimately, these resources are going to be bite-sized pieces of information for your users to be able to access. So as I hit play here, what I, there's a couple of things that I want to highlight here. So your users are going to be able to... Um, follow along with this transcription they can jump ahead as needed or they have the ability to translate this to their preferred learning language and, and follow along with this video as well but the beauty of the transcription is it is allowing your users uh, to search any content within this video so this is a really great use case for if you have a, a new hire coming on six fronts from now you've done an all company kickoff and you plan the goals for the year they can actually jump back and follow along and see any key points that they may have missed prior to joining your organization. And I also do want to highlight here that the majority of the videos are going to be five minutes or less. So bite-sized information for your users to find the resources that they need and to get back onto their project work. Now, in the event that you do have longer sessions, whether it was a vendor-led session, it was a Teams um, lunch and learn, whatever it may be, you are able to add bookmarks to your videos to allow users to jump ahead and find the resources that they need. So there's a really powerful piece in terms of being able to provide a visual representation to your users. Now, let's say, for instance, I'm not a video person. I'd rather have a text-based resource. So our documents are actually going to host visual and text-based instruction for your users. If I review this content and I'm not finding what I need, I'm going to have access to additional related resources here as a user. Um, if you have an intern come on and they're like, they've read this, they're looking for a little bit more instruction as well, you have the ability to establish product experts that are internal to your organization. And so these are key individuals for your users to reach out for, to have further clarification provided to them. And this is going to be that flexibility piece that you have. Now, you also can take this one step further. Let's say you're a service desk individual or you, you have candidates that are asking you questions constantly. You have the ability to share this resource into a Teams chat. You can share it via email or you can share it to a work group, which is another way to organize content or you have the ability to share it to a My Favorites or a My Assets in this case. So if I select My Assets here, it's gonna go ahead and have that resource appear on my homepage for me to quickly reference a little bit later on. So essentially, as I scroll down here, I jump into My Assets, that resource is gonna be a quick reference point for me, but you're also gonna be able to download this content for offline viewing. So you can actually see this resource for up to 14 days by downloading it. All of that learning data is going to be tracked and will be re-uploaded to the management utility once that user connects back to the internet. But 
I think the key takeaway with the my favorites or my assets in this case is processes. So let's say, for instance, as an organization, there is a specific process you guys do once a year. Obviously, when you're doing something not uh, once a year, not as often, not on a daily, regular basis, you're likely to have skills erosion. And so what we want to enable users to do is to function uh, efficiently and correctly the first time. And so our workflows, again, are customizable. It's going to provide that step-by-step -step guidance for specific teams or groups, allowing those users to have access to the resources that they need at a specific time. But one of my favorite features of the platform is the ability to uh, leverage our tool command links. So in this case, I've followed the steps accordingly. I can go ahead and select collaborate here. And this is going to run a work sharing command in my Revit project work. So it's going to open up while I'm functioning on side by side with this and run that command on my behalf. This is a huge opportunity for, for new hires or fresh graduates that may not be as familiar with your command driven or functioning within a project work. It is a powerful piece in terms of being able to ensure that things are done correctly the first time you're reducing any rework and allowing your users to function efficiently. So while this work sharing command is finishing running here, there is another piece of this that I want to talk to you about, and that includes our related learning topics plugin. So this related learning topics plugin will function alongside AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Plant 3D, and Revit. And ultimately what it is doing is it is gonna generate contextual learning for your users as they're selecting different commands. So I select the doors command, it is gonna open up that contextual learning for those users to be able to see. So if they need a reference point, they have that opportunity. So let's say for instance, as an organization, there is a specific way that you operate within doors, you can tag your own custom content to this command, uh, this uh, plugin. And as that user selects that command, your resources will appear here. Since we sync with Active Directory and you can establish single sign-on, by selecting that hyperlink, it is going to be a seamless pass-through for those users because they are not having to even have Pinnacle Series open while they're functioning in their project work to have access to those just-in-time on-demand resources um, daily. So in addition here, what I want to highlight is the ability to leverage what are called work groups. So work groups are another way to organize content. So think about projects teams. You're going to have specific disciplines. This could be office locations, or it could be something as simple as onboarding a new team member. But ultimately, what you want to do here is you want to share relevant resources, whether it's learning, project specifics. You have the ability to assign out that information. You can allow your teams to collaborate together via the discussion panel. But where this stands apart from the rest of the platform is the ability to invite external members. So let's say, for instance, you have a project coming up and you are working with a contractor or a subcontractor. What you are enabling them to do is by inviting them to this work group is you're giving them access to specific learning material, project specifics, how your organization operates, but you're not allowing them to access any of the other proprietary information that you have within the platform. So it's a way to share resources, but to pare it down for that specific user or individual. If you are working with a project management firm or anything along those lines, you can assign an administrator from their side and they can invite this, the people that they need. So you are able to delegate that piece as well. There is also going to be the ability to access a dashboard. I like to think of this as a sandbox opportunity for firms to use as they see fit. So let's say, for instance, you are going to be working on a lot of projects. You need to link out to project permits. You want to focus on a project timeline. You can use the flexibility of this dashboard to provide that to that specific group. You could hone in on the usage reports. Really, what is what else, whatever is going to be beneficial for that team to be able to leverage and help them function efficiently on their day-to-day -day is what is going to be beneficial within that area. Now, as an overall guide to how the users are accessing the platform, you are going to be able to see the usage that's being consumed by your users. So let's say, for instance, I want to take a look at the last year. Essentially, I can come down here and I can hit refresh. And from here, what I can do is I can see what users are signing in, what resources are being accessed. So it's a really good gut check for your content managers in terms of where they're spending their time. Let's say, for instance, you're developing a lot of videos and you're realizing that your users are 
predominantly favoring documents, it's a really good indication on where to, to put your focus moving forward. You are also able to see what users are searching for within the platform. So let's say, for instance, there's a common term coming up, there's limited resources. It's a really good indication on where to spend your time uh, providing training and resources moving forward. You are also able to see what content is being contributed as well as who's adding and modifying that content. So if you have a lot of hands in the pot, you can validate when things are being uploaded and added and modified and deleted, that sort of thing. So there is that flexibility that exists there. So that concludes our, our demonstration of the platform. What I want to do here is I want to jump back into our slide deck and talk a little bit more about what a Pinnacle Series subscription includes. So Danny, you want to talk a little bit more about this? Absolutely, Nicole. Thank you so much. Great presentation. Yeah, so everything you saw today, everything Nicole showed you is going to be included with the Pinnacle Series subscription. So access to all of the courses, all of the documents, workflows, the videos, our live events, um, the translations. I saw there was some interest in what languages we, we offer in the Q&A. So translations to over 90 languages. Great reporting. Um, it's super detailed right down to the most granular item you could be looking for. Uh, we provide unlimited Azure storage, Azure storage, cloud storage, excuse me, for all of your, your own content. Um, the customization features are all available from adding in your own content, from taking our content and modifying it or adding to it to fit your own processes. And we also offer an open API, which allows you to connect maybe to some other internal systems that you might have. So as part of the standard library, you're going to get all of the Autodesk content, including the Construction Cloud content, along with all the titles you see here, many of which you're probably working already with Microsoft on. And then we also have add-on content um, available for Adobe, for Microsoft Office, for business management skills and health and safety.